Well, hello, everybody, and welcome into week two of the Williamson Herald High School Report. I'm Joe Williams, along with our multimedia expert, the extremely talented, Charles Pulliam. Charles, uh, you did a lot of running last week. Great videos, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, as always, we just come to expect <laughs> it. We forget to tell you that every once in a while. Uh, but week one, high school football is done, and it was, uh, I think it was everything we expected, maybe a little more. Well, you think about some of our all-county matchups there. We had our original rivalry game. We had a great comeback in Ravenwood Centennial. We saw um, some of our newer teams coming fresh. I mean, I think of the Nolensville win at Fayetteville yep. is a really big highlight for the county out there. I'll tell you what, it was just a fun first week. Second week will be no different, we don't we believe. And I tell you what, let's let's open up with the rematch. And it could be a rematch across the county because last year uh, at the end of the season, Cane Ridge literally ran the table on Williamson County teams. Uh, Brentwood beat them last year during the regular season, lost in the playoffs. I guarantee you, those boys won't come of this one Friday night. Well, you're talking about a Ravens team that's coming in here 34 and 6 over, since 2015. Yeah. I mean, and they make it to the championship game last year in Class 6A. So that's something to be said about this Cane Ridge team, and some of those big players are back. But Brentwood, they clipped them in week two last year. <laughs> Fell in the second round of the playoffs last year as well, too. So they split that series, and now coming back to Brentwood, this should be a really entertaining rematch game because it gets to kind of show where both these teams are. We saw Cane Ridge take out a Marshall County team, a very talented Marshall County team, 35-28 in overtime, but it took all of that for sure. Well, and I'm not sure if that's a better measure of Marshall County or a measure that maybe Cane Ridge is not what we think. I, I just don't know it's how to tough. read that one. It's a tough one to read. And then at the same time, we see the same thing with the Brentwood team yep. that really struggled against Franklin. They had to rally to come back to beat Franklin on a field goal. 17-14 uh, for that original rivalry win. So both teams coming off probably not their best performances, working out some of those tweaks, and now you're going to go right into a matchup that helps decide 6A in some ways. And yeah, I mean, this is going to be a chance to see some things that could come back later on to be important. Uh, our next game, let's look at the border battle. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy, talk about uh, county rivalry. Independence hosting Summit. Summit last year beat independence they get a big win 12-7 over their other arch rival mm -hmm. spring hill last week um and uh, independence struggled it's the only word you can use <laughs> against a team that is very uh, very obviously i think the number one team in the state right now murfreesboro oakland and it's funny because i asked both coaches i said look are you are you worried about a letdown going into a big rival game after last week and the answer was almost identical and both of them went you're kidding. This is <laughs> Indy. This is Summit, right? This is going to be a big game. Over the last four or five years, this game, this border battle game, has really turned into one of my favorite rivalries in the county because you just can't beat it. I mean, these kids, uh, both on and off the field, get up for this game more so than, yeah, I mean, I, it's right there. I mean, that is right next to the Battle of the Woods and side by side, I think, when you get some of these games together. And there's a lot of ties to this one, too. Unfortunately, I don't think we get to see Ethan Cash playing for no. Independence. That would even just add to the rivalry in some ways. But we do get to see a lot of those familiar names out there. And I think when you talk about last week and uh, just that that game Indy had to absorb facing one of the best teams in the state, if not the region, um, Nathan Cisco, we'll see how he does coming out for quarterback there. Uh, saw some good stuff for the young fellow there for Summit. Ashton did well, too, but it always comes back to George Odomegwu, who, what, 120 yards, touchdown. Yeah. Score, yeah, there you go. So how are these two teams going to kind of come up for this game and you know the weapons are there it's just a matter of how it happens yeah and summit or excuse me indy comes in with maybe the best weapon we've got in the county right now in tj sheffield oh, the kid did if you could have seen the touchdown run last year he starts right last year last week <laughs> he starts right reverses field literally past the hash mark goes all the way back around and then dives from the four yard line sticks his hand out to hit the pylon for the for the eagles only score one of the more talented kids you're going to see out there, especially at this, at this region, this area, you, you just can't beat a kid like that. TJ is one for one to be watching here next year as well oh, on yeah. Saturdays, and then, hey, maybe even beyond. Could be. Another one of the great county rivalries. It's not there yet. It's only a couple of years old, but I think it's going to become one. 
Page and Nolansville and the Patriots after the first week on their beautiful new field. Yes, I'm eating a little crow on that, but they did get it in on their beautiful new field. Now they get to play on Nolansville's beautiful field. And like I said, this is a budding rivalry of matchups and stuff. I, I want this one to carry on each year as well, too. A uh, little bit of a lopsided one last year, but I think these two teams enter a lot more level fielded here. Um, Fairview came into Page last week. I think that new turf really got the Patriots going. They win 28-20. Cade Walker with a big game there at quarterback. Uh, throws for a couple touchdowns. 11-16 throwing. Really efficient game. On the other side, it was all Colton Dooley for Nolensville. That kid came out five touchdowns, 180 yards rushing. Just fantastic performance for that kid there. Next one that's going to be a goodie. Franklin, after absorbing that tough loss at, uh, at Brentwood, Goes on the road, they go to Rutherford County to face Murfreesboro, Riverdale, one of the most storied programs in, in the mid-state, and also one that lost last week to uh, the, team, yeah, yeah. the East Nashville Eagles, I believe. You know yes, team, yeah. yes. Now, there's no reason for the grant. <laughs> so, yeah, Riverdale came in, lost at East Nashville 30-22, to and actually, you know, had a couple opportunities in the fourth quarter, just couldn't capitalize. And Franklin, on the other hand, was leading at Brentwood 14-7 to before falling 17-14 to on a field goal with about 140 to play. So both teams, I think this is going to be a nice matchup because they're both kind of coming in at the same the same level in some ways. And of course, you always got to go to Kreisky and Donnie Webb match up as well. You know the history there. That's oh, yeah. just a lot of fun there. The mentor and the mentee. Yep. Yeah. And uh, so I I'm excited about this one. I it's just, I think Riverdale has a little bit of the edge because it's at home. I think, uh, really? <laughs> I might disagree with that. We'll see what happens. Uh, talk about comebacks last week. There may not have been a better one than the comeback that Ravenwood made at Centennial. Down big. They come back win 35-28. Uh, I know that's got to be weighing a little bit on Centennial. We'll talk that about that in a minute because the Raptors this week, they travel to Rutherford County, too, to face Siegel. And going against the Seagull team that was shut out by Stewart's Creek last week, but I think this Ravenwood team's just looking to get that momentum and keep it going. In the fourth quarter at Centennial, they were unstoppable. They were trailing 28-14 to to start the fourth, come back to win 35-28. to uh, Brian Garcia, our Gateway Tire Player of the Week, actually led three scoring drives, two touchdown passes to Anthony Holmes. Hauled in two beautiful passes. Holmes goes for six catches, 98 yards, and two TDs. And a lot of that in the fourth quarter. It was just fun to see Ravenwood kind of just find their groove and really keep going. Unfortunately for Centennial, it just spelled a tough county region loss there. But uh, Ravenwood looked sharp for sure. Unfortunately for Siegel and for Stewart's Creek, too, they'll both be without a player this week. Uh, had a couple of linemen yep. duke it out. To, I think maybe there were two punches thrown the whole deal, but that means there were punches thrown. Those kids have been suspended. It cost the schools $250 each. How important that will be, I'm not sure, but uh, it, it, it always puts a, a downer on you as a team when you know up front that somebody's not going to be there because of something that probably shouldn't have happened. Oh, exactly. And this is a Seagull team. We got to see them at the Jamboree a couple weeks ago as well. Just not a lot of the former star power we've seen from a team like that. And obviously going into a Stewart's Creek game like that, a lot of uh, emotions just kind of erupted there. Yeah. Speaking of, of Ravenwood, last week's game, Centennial gets to be at home as uh, they'll face Hendersonville in a game that, you know, you hate to use the term must win. But after being that close last week, just from a confidence standpoint, Charles, you know, these kids have got to be thinking, we got to get this one. Oh, and confidence-wise, I think Centennial had all of the confidence you could have when it came to that first half. I mean, you get the opening kickoff return for a touchdown from Jerry o. Wilson. Um, Grayson Marcel to Joey Gustafson is going to turn into something that we're going to hear about all season long. They connected for 270-yard touchdown scores. But then they just completely let off the gas to, in that second half. Hendersonville did the same thing against Blackman. They were trailing 14 to 10 by the half, and then Blackman tacks on two more scores and shuts out the commandos the rest of the way. Obviously, Centennial uh, went against a much tougher commando team last year, 56-21 loss yeah. there. I don't think we're going to see that kind of no. scoring, but the potential is there for Centennial. It's just a matter of putting that full game together. 
And our final game in Division I after losing on the road in the Battle of 840, Fairview goes back to their friendly confines <laughs> of Yellow Jacket Stadium to host White House area. And the Yellow Jackets actually outgained Page in the Battle mm -hmm. of 840. They had a lot of potentials there, just unable to convert on some of those scoring opportunities. And I think Coach Chris Hughes and the crew are really going to focus in on that. And I expect a really determined, focused Yellow Jacket team to do this home opener there. Um, again, I think it was 346 to 280 or so. They, they outgained the Patriots. Just Page capitalized on those scoring opportunities a little better behind Kate Walker. Quickly, we look at some teams in Division Two. We'll start out up in Nashville, where two undefeated teams will meet. Brentwood Academy winning their opener, but so did Father Ryan. And I, I got to tell you, I think it's a long time since Father Ryan Brentwood Academy met when both of them were undefeated. Year three of the Brian Rector repair plan underway. <laughs> and this was a game last year that Father Ryan really went up for. I mean, it was 14 yeah. to 13 in the second half before that talented senior trio that we're going to be watching in Vanderbilt this year yeah. uh, just kind of led the way and blew it open for a 38-13 win. They scored the final 24 points of the game, but Father Ryan was right there. Antonio Wright, a couple touchdown runs in that early win in the neighborhood game uh, last week against Overton. I think this Father Ryan team, knowing that it is at Father Ryan, you never know. Brentwood Academy is going into a rowdy place for this one. Yeah, but you got to remember it is Brentwood Academy, uh -huh. and they do have uh -huh. Pleasant and all the other guys. So, yep. And Pleasant put together quite the game last week. I think he rushed for about 180 yards and two touchdowns. So, <laughs> yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow can run the ball, there is uh -huh. no doubt. Uh -huh. uh, down the road here, uh, across, well, I say across town, I should say, BGA goes on the road after winning. They'll face uh, Nashville Christian. Nashville Christian 1-0, but that's a little deceptive. They lost to the... Probably top team, well, the top team in this area, if not the state, uh, in double A. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I think double A. Yeah. 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 Columbia Academy. They're awfully <laughs> they good. Go. The, the catch is that loss may not tell you a whole lot about Nashville Christian. Well, 21 14 loss yeah. at that, too. On the other side, though, you think about this BGA team really finding their groove immediately here under a new quarterback from Nick Sem Tim Felter. Very good. Got to sound it out, but it's going to get better. 46 7, um, they beat Forrest last week. And Nick, he threw the ball as efficient as you can 18 to 22, 281 yards, touchdown there. He just. He, he just knows. I mean, you've seen him right from the start here. He's kind of come through multiple programs within the county. And I think with Ty Reed, Chico Bennett did some great stuff yep. out there as well. He's got the targets, and uh, this should be a fun one. So you did the same thing I always did uh, when, the, when the Brentwood Blaze would come see the Franklin Cowboys. We'd announce him one time, and then it was Nick after that. I think he's probably used to that. <laughs> Another good game up off of uh, Old Hickory Boulevard Friday night will be Innsworth visiting CPA after Four losses, CPA finally broke that string last year, beat Innsworth. No, they'd love to do it again. 21-22, that was one of the better early season games yeah. we saw last year was CPA's victory over Ensworth. Now they're going to face uh, a different kind of Tiger team. It looks like they struggled against Lipsum Academy, won 14-6, but just not the Ensworth team, that caliber that we might be used to. But CPA coming in, Jake Elledge had three touchdown passes in that first opener, and uh, – you know, I, th I think they're just ready to roll. Our final game to look at, and it is a long road trip for FRA as they go out to South Gibson County. That's uh, out near Jackson. That's, that's a haul, brother. Oh, man. Yeah, well, you know, you're used to uh, not having as many road trips as yeah. someone like myself, but that is definitely one of the longer ones you're going to get around here. I think of uh, when Centennial went to Henry County and switching off stuff like that. Right. I mean, this is, these are some halls here, but it's going to come down to uh, Lance Wilhort. Is he going to be able to play? Is he not going to be able to? And uh, for FRI, we'll just see how they can handle that. That's the set for this week. As always, follow us on Twitter and be sure and check the WilliamsonHerald.com all night Friday night as we will bring you full coverage Friday night and into Saturday morning. We got a good team, too. <laughs> Some of the best reporters and photographers out there. We're just happy to have everyone kind of coming together for Williamson County football. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm Joe Williams for Charles Pulliam. This has been the Williamson Herald Weekly Report, Week 2. We'll see you in Week 3.